Hi there, I'm SR Coder and this is part 6 of my ML API tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be covering shooting. So uh, stick with it and happy coding. So the first thing we're going to do is create a trail renderer so that when we fire a bullet, we can actually see that bullet, um, whether it's from the client or the host. So just to create a trail from the effect menu, I'm going to call this um, bullet trail. Uh, the next thing we want to do is just uh, let's adjust these settings. So we'll set the width down to um, a little bit smaller, so 0 0.05. Um, I'm also going to set the length of time. That's how, how long the trail is going to last. I'll just set that to a small value like 0 0.2 seconds. And um, when you move it around, you'll see that the, the trail kind of uh, disappears um, from a certain time from when it was spawned in. And I'll also set it to auto destruct um, so that when the um, when it's finished, it's uh, it's just going to be closed and just adjust these light settings as well so that um, we don't receive shadows or send shadows. And the last thing is just the caps. Uh, so it looks a bit nicer if it's sort of slightly smooth. So you can set those two values to three and you see the so it curves the ends of it. The next set is to make the script. So we're just going to create a C sharp script. I'm going to call this um, player shooting. And let's open this up and start working on it. So we'll be including ML API as you'd expect. And also uh, we're going to turn this into a network behavior as well so that we have a bit more functionality as I've done in the previous one. So we're going to need to include this um, prefab that we want. So it was a trail renderer. So I'm going to say trail renderer um, and we'll call it bullet trail. And we're going to make this public so that we're able to um, see it and assign, assign it in the inspector. And then we'll be able to just instantiate this when we uh, want to shoot. All right, so if we are the local player, so only if we are is local player, um, only for a local player we want to shoot. So just give myself a quick code comment. So we'll just check um, if the local player actually hits the key. So we'll use input dot um, get button down and I'm going to use a fire one which by default um, in Unity is just the left mouse button. Um, uh, now the quickest way to do this is uh, we obviously want to um, tell the server that we've pressed the button. Uh, so we'll just use using mlapi.messaging and this gives us access to all of the uh, messaging systems that will allow us to communicate across with the server. So um, you use an attribute to define a function as a server RPC. So the server RPCs, um, these um, run on the server and they're called by a client. So they actually go from, um, from the client to the server and they actually run on the server. Um, you can make any functions you want. You can have any parameters just as normal as you'd expect. However, the uh, key thing that you must do is um, you must make it um, have the the prefix or sorry the uh, the postfix of server RPC. So if I just say um, shoot, I have to put in server RPC as the um, as the other value uh, that's included in the name. Otherwise, this will cause an error and it won't work. So this server RPC is where I've actually where I actually want to shoot. There's a couple of values that I might send to this um, just so that we can be absolutely accurate. But I think we'll 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 put those in in a second once we've got this actually working. So in order for this to work, the server RPC this will run actually on the server, and um, in our simplest simplest model out of all of them, all we'll do is we'll run this well when the player actually shoots. So we'll run this function. So we'll say um, shoot server RPC. We're just telling the server that this connected client 
um, has actually tried to shoot. Um, all this will do is it will distribute this message out to all the others by running um, a separate method, which will have, um, which will be the client RPC. And the client RPC, this one works from the server to the client. Well, I can't spell server to the client. So we can just, uh, and again, we have to give it that postfix. Um, so we'll call it shoot again, but this time we'll call it client RPC and we'll take no parameters again. So this is the absolute simplest method to get communication about events that happen on a local machine. So again, we just check for the local player and then we run the server RPC telling the server that this player has shot and then the server distributes it out to all the co connected clients of this, all the clones out on the different um, the different connections. So this is where we actually kind of want to do the magic. So we'll just uh, do what we need to do for this shoot to client RPC. There are a couple of things that I have to actually add in in order for this to happen. So what I'm going to do is just add in um, a public transform, which will be the place that the bullet's going to come from. So um, we'll call it gun barrel. I think that's how you spell gun barrel. And then um, before I forget, I'll just jump back into um, my instance and add that gun barrel to the player and uh, create a prefab for my bullet trail so that we can put those on too because I have a nasty habit of forgetting. So um, the, the script, um, if I double click the player, we'll get the player up here. I want the script, the player shooting script goes onto the player. Get them up again, player shooting goes onto the player here and these uh, two prefabs need filled out. So I'll go back out here, find my bullet trail. Just check that it works again and um, on the uh, player again, whoops, come back out, take this bullet trail and turn it into a prefab. So just drag it into the scene here. So we have a bullet trail prefab. I can remove it from here now and then back to the player. And on the player, <clears throat> I want to take this um, bullet trail, drag it into this gun barrel. And on top of the main camera, I'm going to create an empty that will be my gun barrel. And uh, I'm just going to position it slightly off and down and forward so that we can uh, <clears throat> don't shoot from inside the player because that, that will be bad when we start doing uh, raycasts because uh, then we'll hit the actual player or we'll hit the eye. So back to the player again and take this gun barrel as the gun barrel that we're going to shoot from. So now that we've done that, if we just open up the script, we're going to keep this as simple as possible. So uh, when we run the shoot server RPC, the only thing we're going to do is uh, immediately um, send it back to all the clients. So we'll say shoot client RPC. Um, we're not taking any parameters. We're just sending it straight to there, which means that every client will run this code on it. And uh, to begin with, this will be a good example of how to get these messages working across the uh, across the network. So all we want to do is um, we're going to say uh, var bullet equals, and then we're going to instantiate that um, bullet prefab, bullet trail prefab at the uh, gun barrel dot position. Uh, really, we can actually make it at the uh, quaternion dot identity, which is just the default rotation. So this is create this gun barrel at that position and uh, default orientation. Um, when I was testing this, um, this bullet, um, what we have to do is we have to add its position right now. So we have to add its um, add one position so that when we when we move it, it uh, actually uh, does draw a trail from its start this this position to the next position. So uh, we'll just say um, gun barrel dot position. So we've added a single position, and then what we should be able to do is just um, find a recast uh, to where we've hit, and um, and then from that raycast, we'll move this bullet back to that position. So again, it's not too difficult to do that. So we'll do if physics dot if I can spell physics dot raycast and uh, heaps of different versions of this that we can do. Um, let's do and uh, the gun barrel dot position and then gun barrel dot forward. 
and then we'll choose um, a raycast hit. Uh, we actually need to make this an out variable. Out raycast hit, we'll call this hit. Um, and we'll leave it at that to keep it as simple as possible. So this will get the value. If this is true, this hit value will contain what we need. So we'll just say um, hit dot uh, point is able to, we're able to get hit dot point. So what we'll do is we'll say that the um, bullet dot transform. So we'll move it straight forward um, to the, the hit dot point. So dot positions move it straight forward to the hit point and then that way we should see the trail drawn um, drawn behind it. Dear me. So position equals hit dot point. All right I'll just move it forward. The um, only option that we're missing here is if we make the raycast and it doesn't hit anything but we know we've actually shot what we should do is just make the bullet go to a point that's um, a certain distance ahead. Um, actually, we could use that. We could do um, uh, a distance for this one. We could say two hundred as the distance. Um, so this will this will get the out position, but it'll also take a distance of two hundred. So what we want to do is um, set that position. So we'll say bullet dot transform dot position equals and then we'll say um, the gun barrel dot position plus and then inside of brackets we're going to say gun barrel dot forward times 200 so that will just multiply this um, normalized forward vector uh, by 200 so we know what 200 units ahead of the gun is and we'll set the position of the bullet trail to that. It's just time to make sure we can test that. Just before we test it, one of the um, things you might want to do is um, if you double click your trail, the uh, white doesn't really show up against the white, so it doesn't really look as good as it should. So um, if you double click the trail prefab, uh, bullet trail prefab, you can change the um, start color and end color just to something else. Um, so you just click on the little dot and then choose the color. So I just changed it to yellow so it looks a little bit better. And then I'll um, go out of the prefab and we'll show what it looks like. I'm going to host on this side and uh, just join on this side and uh, you see the two players are kind of like running around and when you shoot the yellow thing um, you'll actually see him shoot the yellow uh, bullet trail from the gun barrel position in his direction. Now when you're playing this even with a local host uh, you do get a, a sort of a real delay between when you click it and when you actually the bullet appears and uh, part of the reason for that is that the client is the one who is firing it. So the message goes all the way to the server and then it comes all the way back before um, before it's actually drawn. And uh, we could optimize that a little bit. Um, and we could also be a bit more consistent about the position of where the bullet comes from. Um, right now when we're um, coding this, we uh, when we draw it, the message goes all the way up to the server. So we shoot, the, shoot on the client, goes all the way up to the server and then it gets distributed um, straight back down onto the client where it's transform um, where the transform position of the actual gun barrel is used to um, initialize the raycast. So the gun barrel may have moved or it may not be at the same position once you uh, once you actually click. So we could maybe try and optimize that. This is a pretty basic way to get some shooting going on. Um, and this gives you the idea of the whole idea of this um, server RPC, uh, getting sent a message, getting sent up to the server, and then sent and distributed straight back down to all the connected clients. So you could have 10 players on the scene right now and each one would be shooting their bullets um, from their local player when the local player clicks the button.